probing questions or when we ask people questions almost like a detective would. Things that are getting us deeper into what they're saying and we're requesting more information based on what they are saying. For example, they start off with, these are starter phrases or lead-in lines. Lead-in lines are so awesome because at times like this that are tough, it's difficult to get started. If you practice the beginnings of sentences that you can reuse and recycle in many different situations, those are lead-in lines. It helps you get the phrase out. They get you started with things like, have you ever noticed this blah, 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 blah. Has this been happening a lot, a lot, a lot? Have you told anyone about blah, 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 blah? Those are questions that are probing questions that generally if you're a, maybe a psychologist or a therapist or a, a detective trying to get more information from somebody, that's the beginning of the sentences that they tend to use. And so if they make comments like, well, you know, I'm sorry, I just, I couldn't help myself. I just blurted it out. Are you finding other situations where you just can't control yourself lately? You know, things just are coming out. <laughs> you know, are you fine? You know, or <laughs> are you finding that it's happening a lot to you recently that you aren't able to control yourself or your thoughts or what you say? Are you finding that it's difficult to really control what comes out of you these days? Are you <laughs> or, you know, are you finding that you're having spasms as well? Are there other things about you that you aren't able to control? <laughs> you know, or, or I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot that you told me not to give the kids brandy. It won't happen again. Okay. Are you finding that you're forgetting a lot of things these days? Is it difficult to remember things the way you used to? Some of my favorite probing questions are, have you talked to anyone else about this? Your doctor, for example? Or one of my all-time favorites, if it really gets there, have you talked to your caseworker about this? You don't have a caseworker? Well, we could get you one. <laughs> you know, or, <laughs> or, you know, if they say something like, Is that, what's that smell? Is that Indian food? What's what smell, Marge? Oh, oh, nothing, nothing. Nothing, it was nothing. That was my imagination. Hmm. Are you noticing any other phantom sensations these days? Are you, you know, for example, are you having any phantom visions or hearing any phantom voices? <laughs> you know, ask people probing questions. When people make dumb excuses for the things that they say or do, you know, and they say things like, oh, I don't know, I forgot what I was saying. Are you having trouble remembering what you're saying a lot these days? Or are you forgetting maybe where you're going? Are you ever forgetting where you are? Have you talked to somebody about this? <laughs> You know, again, I'm trying to be loving here. I'm taking what you are saying at face value. And we prepared for this. Don't worry. We can help. <laughs> you know, or in my mother's case, you know, mom, lift your hands up over your head and say Merry Christmas as you smile. <laughs> you know, because if, if they look like this, then you know there really is a problem. <laughs> so sometimes we need to actually take people at face value. But under normal circumstances, that's exactly what I'm going to do then. If you want me to take what you say seriously, let's do it. That said, let's move right along to practicing. You want to invest time. Just like we invest time and money in anything else, you want to have the right tools. And the reason is because in the moments when we need our communication skills the most, it's the moment when our brain is really the weakest. We have two sides to our brain, right? We have the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side is where our logic lives and our language lives. Facts, figures, memory, things like that. The right-hand side is where creativity lives and emotions live and big picture thinking, stuff like that. When one side of the brain is activated, the energy is increased, for example, the other side of the brain is deactivated and the energy decreases naturally. So when one side increases, the other side decreases. That's the way our brain works under normal circumstances. That explains why many of us, maybe you know this experience, if you are getting super emotionally charged or if somebody takes you off guard or if you're you know, dealing with a mother-in-law who knows how to push your buttons just with one sentence, we forget our words and we can't say hardly anything. That's because, again, left-hand side of the brain, that's where language lives. Right-hand side of the brain, emotions. When it's activated, it draws you out of language. You want to have the right tools that you can practice. And so if you're not already in my courses and you're not equipped with flashcards and things like that, I can't tell you how much I recommend making a set of flashcards. You don't need to be in any course. You can make them yourself, but have them physically available to you so that you can use them as visual cues. And when you have a moment in time here and there, practice 
your phrases, practice your tactics, practice your processes, repeat things in no risk situations so that when it comes time that you need them, they can flow off the tongue more easily. And finally, let's talk about the challenge questions. The challenge questions are going to be questions that I was asked earlier, like, so when are you guys going to stop living in sin and settle down? You know, are you going to raise the kids Catholic? You know, those types of questions. So who'd you vote for? Things like that. I'm assuming that your motives are not evil. So I will ask you one of my magic phrases. Remember that you should never be at a loss for words. Ever. A polished communicator who has invested a little bit in his or her communication skills should never be stumped for something to say. And what I mean by that is you, you can always say something you know, rude, or you can always say something that reveals that you really don't have a response. But if you have invested in your skills a little bit, you should have what are called duct tape responses that you can use to buy some time a little bit here and there. Just like at the beginning when I said, when you say X, Y, Z, are you really trying to say A, B, C? When you say that I've always found such interesting friends, are you trying to say that I run, run, run with the wrong, wrong reindeer? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> You know, when, <laughs> when I ask those questions, the beginning of it, when you say, and then I repeat back to them what they said, that whole process, you should be so used to saying it and so practiced, you know, by using flashcards and other visual cues, that while you're saying it, you're thinking to yourself, how am I going to end this? And it's not that difficult because you should just be honest. It sounds like what you're doing is you're trying to embarrass me here in front of everybody because I spent time making a cake just for you. And in... in Instead of appreciating it and saying thank you, you're insulting me right here at the O'Connor family table that bears my name. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> you know, I'm just getting clarification. So you don't need to be a wizard and come up with clever new things. All you have to do is state what you believe is really going on. That's it. That is it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's always okay. That is always okay. If you ever question somebody's motives or what's going on there, clarify it. That's always okay. When you ask me if I made this peach cobbler myself, it sounds to me like what you're really trying to say is that it tastes more like reindeer poop. Is that what you're saying? And so when I don't feel like clarifying it, maybe I'm taken off guard or maybe I'm just being asked a challenge question. You can always ask people, interesting, why would you ask me that? Now, if I want to push it a little bit further, I might say under certain circumstances, Interesting. Why would you ask me that right here at this time in front of these people? You know, you can ask one of those things. Why would you ask me that right here? Why would you ask me that in front of these people? Why would you ask me that, period? But when you ask people, why would you ask me that? Sometimes you'll get an answer that'll surprise you, you know, that will shock you and people will be like, because I've been saving up for a long time for your child and I just want to know how much longer I have to save. And you'll be like, oh, honey, let's get on that tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but... Under normal circumstances, what you will get is people saying, well, I don't know, just, I'm just curious, you know, I mean, we've been waiting forever for you two to stop living in sin. I'm just wondering when it may be. Well, Marge, I prefer to discuss private matters like that and decisions that I make in private, in private. And I'm sure you would understand and respect that. And if somebody keeps going at that point, you know, well, I just wanted to know blah, blah, blah. Don't underestimate or forget that that may be but with the broken record. You know, so if I got one of those questions as I did at the beginning, like, who did you vote for? You know, I might say, interesting, Marge, why would you ask me that? I think we should be open and honest about who we vote for, don't you think? Well, what I think is that those decisions I make in private, and they are private decisions, and I prefer to discuss them only in private. Well, you shouldn't be ashamed of who you vote for. Well, that may be, but those are private decisions, and I choose to make them in private and discuss them in private. What? You think somebody here might be a little mad? You might, are you embarrassed? I simply believe that those types of private decisions should be talked about in private, and I'm going to keep it private. Keep repeating yourself. That's private. I discuss it in private. I make it in private, and I'm keeping it private. I'm a private type of guy. <laughs> so don't underestimate the power of the that may be but and the broken record. Well, that may be but decisions like that that are private ones that I make in private, I like to discuss in private. Well, I just don't know why you're so afraid. Well, that may be, but those are private decisions that I tend to make in private and discuss in private. 
And with all of those tools, how could you not enjoy the next time you go see your mother-in-law? I mean, come on. Now you are ready. You can have fun. You can be confident. And to communicate with confidence is a gift that you will be giving yourself and maybe your mother-in-law. You never know. And when you use these, please think of me and let me know how they work out for you. Let me know the stories that you have. Because our next episode, by the way, I'm going to be holding a live session where we discuss things just like this and get some of your questions answered right there. And I'm not exactly sure what time I'm going to post that. Again, great reason to hit that notification bell. But also, if you could post what time you think would be a best time or a good time to host a live session on YouTube where we do some question and answer, let me know in the qu- in the comment section below because I'm at a loss. I do not know. And I would appreciate any input that you have. And I would also appreciate just knowing how everybody's doing. So whether you're struggling in general, not with communication, unless it is about communication, but in general, how's everybody doing? It's been a tough year. And I'm glad that so many of you stuck with me during this year. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all of your support. So I'd like to give as much of that back as I possibly can. So stay in touch and let me know what's going on this holiday season and where you are and who you're with and whoever you're with. I really hope that you are with people that you love because you deserve that. And you deserve to be loved right back. And if you are lucky enough to be with people that you love this holiday season, speak loving words to them. You'll always be glad you did. There's not a message that needs to be sent that can't be sent in a loving way using loving words. I know that. And if, if you ever have trouble doing that, that's what I'm here for. I can help. So let me know how I can help. And I will always do my best to help you speak loving words to the people that you love or even people that you don't love, because <laughs> that's what it's all about. And I appreciate everybody who's joined together to help raise this global dialogue one conversation at a time because we desperately need to do it and we're doing it. So I thank everybody. I'm right there with you. I appreciate all of your help. And for everyone here at Dan O'Connor Training, this is Dan O'Connor signing off.